There's a pretty big problem with VR right now. It's been a problem and it's likely going to continue as a problem for a long time. Quite frankly, there just aren't that many really good VR games. Of course, we have Beat Saber and Half-Life Alex and Blade and Sorcery and a few others, but when you compare VR games and their depth or replayability to traditional games, well, I think it speaks for itself. However, the lack of good VR games, I'd say, isn't the actual problem. It's the result of a problem. And that problem is that VR game development is just really, really hard. Actually, in a lot of ways, significantly more difficult than flat screen game development. Think of it this way. When designing a flat screen game, you're essentially making a window into a game's world. The relationship between the game world, camera, and player are all constants that are predictable and easy to design a game around. Designing a virtual reality game, on the other hand, is like smashing that window and all of its constants and then walking through the window into the game world. As one creative director said, suddenly the blueprints and assumptions you have based on traditional game design do not work in the same way when it comes to VR. It's a completely new way of thinking, and we're still pretty much in a wild west phase of VR software. Everyone is clearing the path for the first time, and there are no rules. But I wanted to learn more about why VR game development is so difficult, and so different from literally anything else in history. So, for the past year, I've been working in the same studio space as a VR game developer, XLab, and... I learned pretty quickly, developing a VR game from the ground up can become complicated very fast. Let's talk about some basics of game design for a moment and go back to the window idea. The fundamentals of traditional game design pretty much root from a set of constants, crucial non-changing factors that a game can be built around. This is also pretty much what makes different genres of games different. Like a game's camera, say in a first-person shooter, you essentially control the camera with a controller or mouse and keyboard, but the camera can only move in ways specified by the developer. Forward, back, left, right, up, down. It's a rule. And you have these rules to create the illusion of controlling a character. Animations of a swaying gun placed in front of the camera, footsteps, and occasional world interactions all sell this illusion. And when put this way, playing a traditional flat screen game really is like looking through a window of the game world, held together by the constants and constraints of the developer's vision to give the illusion of an expansive and immersive game world. But here's where things get weird. VR works very differently from a game design philosophy perspective. Imagine removing many of these constraints. This sounds simple, but when you break it down, every aspect of game design that has been built upon for the past 50 to 60 years is fundamentally different. Starting with the camera. In a flat game, I control the camera with WASD and a mouse. But in VR, developers lose total control of the camera. I'm now controlling it with my head and full body movements and a set of controllers for locomotion. Not only do you have to take into account account a player's physical position, but also the player's virtual position and have them line up. This means if something is happening and you want the player to look at it, you gotta figure out some other way to do it rather than just taking control of the camera like we've always done. Otherwise, people start getting motion sick. This also means you have to find a different way to tell a story than a traditional cutscene. There's also an entire shift away from gesture-based gameplay found in traditional games. No longer am I pressing R to reload and watching a 4 second animation on my screen. In VR, I am manipulating game objects with my hands to interact with other game objects in a predictable way. Not exactly simulating the experience of an action, but instead gamifying it. And this goes for every single interaction throughout the entire VR game. Think about every time in a game ever that you've opened a chest, pressed reload, paid respect, swapped a weapon, or even just pressed play. Now you are the one doing the action, and the developer has to create those interactions. It's no longer just a 3D animation that plays out after pressing a button. But typical game world interactions that are inherent to gameplay are one thing. The entire game world being built around interactivity is a whole nother. Flat screen games usually have thousands of props placed within them, placed by developers to make the game look better or add context. But it's not really expected that you should be able to interact realistically with any of these objects. Yeah, I can make a trash can go spinny, but in VR, almost every object potentially can be interactable. And if they aren't, it feels terrible. Immersion is broken immediately. The rule is, if something looks interactive, it has to be interactive. The player has to be able to touch it, lift it, throw it, or press it, but that's still not it. To further push the illusion idea of most flat games, scale is something that is manipulated very often to make the games work or feel more natural. But in reality, if this game's door were real, it'd be 
massive. And this is something that just doesn't work in VR. Most things have to be built to scale. And further, if they're not built to scale, they have to be consistent. Because you're immersed in a virtual world, seeing it first person with your eyes rather than looking at a screen, you naturally can perceive scale much more accurately. Meaning you can also tell far easier when something is just off, breaking that immersion quickly. And there are way more challenges to making a good VR game versus traditional flat game. The list goes on and on. And I think, honestly, this is a big reason why many big developers just haven't touched VR. And a lot of the ones that have, well, the games just came out flat. These core principles that developers have trained upon for decades for this kind of gaming just isn't a one-to-one -one translation to making a good VR game. And the problem isn't that we don't have good VR games, it's that good VR games are hard. Big studios are absolutely capable of making insane VR solutions, but that just doesn't make sense to shareholders. For the extra time, effort, and money required to build those experiences, there isn't a big enough VR population for it to pay off. Yet. And that's where the exciting part comes in. VR development really is still in the Wild West phase. There are no rules. And VR is being carried on the backs of indie developers, people that are passionate about the medium. And actually, one of those indie studios that we're going to be talking to today is Xlab, a developer making something particularly challenging for VR, a multiplayer competitive shooter. And Xlab is pretty interesting. Starting from the time I initially talked with Xlab a year ago, they've essentially gone from a team of three in a dungeon to building a company of nearly 45 employees, turning a passion project into something significantly larger and pretty much dedicating their lives to VR. For a split frame? Like, see, I'm in the map for a split frame. Nice, and it crashed. Crash, yeah. Sound and reset. At its core, Veil VR is a competitive VR first-person shooter. We're really focused on the competitive and esports scene. I'm the main programmer behind the game, and I focus on basically all the core game design, the game architecture, all the core stuff under the hood. But for me, Veil, um, the aspect that gets me the most excited is the combination of next-gen VR, whatever that is, you know, and then where that meets with eSports. Just because eSports demands like the most precise, insane, crazy, reliable, predictable awesomeness because people want to win and they want to know that they're fighting a fair fight in a highly competitive game. But Real quick, really, what makes a competitive game competitive? And why is this idea particularly difficult? Well, chess is known as the most widely played competitive game across humanity, and this is because it's a skill and tactic based game. There is no chance involved. You can't blame the board, the pieces, or rules. If you lose, it's because you were bested. Now, if you apply this idea to a video game, a competitive game is generally one that removes the aspect of chance. Think Counter-Strike, Overwatch, StarCraft, games that structurally are predictable and consistent. And doing this for a flat screen game is one thing. Doing this from the ground up for a VR game though is a little different and pretty much hasn't been done before. I originally became interested in Xlab because they had a hyper focus on really nailing down all of the problems of making a VR competitive shooter. Netcode, performance, latency, gun interactions, spray patterns, the weird VR centric problem of play space cheating, which is totally non-existent in any sort of flat game, but it's one of the biggest things in VR. And they believe that solving these problems for VR, problems that have already been solved in flat screen gaming for decades, but like I said are fundamentally harder in VR, will allow them and the entire VR industry to move forward in a more positive way. The second you make a competitive game multiplayer, now you gotta worry about like all kinds of other stuff, right? Because multiplayer, you're basically all sharing your own simulated worlds at the same time and trying to make it this cohesive thing, like just so that everybody gets this feeling of being in the same place at the same time. Throw in, I want to have avatars with full bodies, with all this stuff going on, and we need to know who shot first. We need to know who shot first. We gotta know, right? So now when you throw all that on top of it and you have voice chat, you have um, players running around in the world, their play space movement of them in their actual space, like their room at home, augmenting that to live like this amazing simulation in this like hardcore VR game, right? These are things that to put them all together for it to all feel tight, for it to all feel responsive, and for when you look at other players, everything just to look normal, <laughs> it gets really weird really fast. But then when you're playing a competitive game, people have very hard ideas about how a competitive game should be 
and what's okay and what's not. In virtual reality, working on a multiplayer game, multiplayer games are much more expensive than single player games because you have to worry about servers, you have to worry about latency, you have to set up servers all across the world. And it's just very expensive to R&D multiplayer in VR because no one's really mastered it to this date. And even for every interaction in VR, we're setting the standards. Like you guys that are watching the community, we're setting the standard for how VR should look and feel. And no one's really found the perfect way yet. And that's the beauty of it. It keeps changing and evolving. And I'm pretty sure that wherever we're at today, I hope to not be there a year and two and three years from now. Like it's still changing. So that's the beauty of game development. So over the past year working in the same building as XLab and eventually becoming an advisor for the studio, I've gained an entirely different perspective on game development in general. And I want to be clear, I am not a game developer. I am a VR enthusiast at heart that happens to cover the industry. And there's no guarantee as well that XLab and Veil will succeed the way that they hope. It could be another game. It could be the wrong time right now. And it's ultimately the same idea as any other game. It's up to XLab to make a game that people want to play and support it, and it's up to the community to decide if they even want to play the game. But they are giving it their all. There's so much heart and effort and love going into the game. And this is the same story for VR developers all over the world. Even though the VR audience is a tiny fraction of the gamer population, and VR game development is inherently far more difficult and less lucrative, at least right now, so many studios and people are putting everything they have into making cool VR experiences, and a lot of times they're building the technology from the ground up to make it happen. Eventually, the big studios will come in and will have our Call of Duties and Halos in VR if that's what you really want. But what we have right now as a community is pretty special. We're plotting and discovering the unlimited possibilities of virtual reality together, even if there are some growing pains. So Veil vale just entered closed beta and you can try it out for yourself to see what they've been working on by requesting access and wishlisting it on Steam or joining their Discord server. They will be moving to open beta in the near future, they're just trying to make the game actually good and ready. And they're also trying something pretty different, hosting one of the first big VR esport competitions for Veil. Vale. The last one of this scale was hosted by Oculus like four years ago, so it's been a while. And all of those details if you're interested in competing or playing the game are in the description. But I wanted to close this one out with something pretty heartfelt. Game development is hard. VR game development is even harder. I didn't even come close to hitting on all of the challenges and difficulties. The list will go on and on, and there are challenges that we haven't even come across yet. It's new and it's exciting, but that being said, the next time you criticize VR for not having any good games, remember, we're getting there. We're all learning. And also, the next time you encounter a bug in a VR game, maybe instead of writing off the whole game or the entirety of VR, maybe we just make it standard for the VR community to give good, constructive feedback, to help developers make better games and overall make VR a better place with better games. Remember, the problem inherently isn't that VR doesn't have good games, that's the result. The problem is that making good games are hard. And a lot of the gaming industry at large just doesn't care yet. Investors don't see the value yet, but you you can help with that. We're all in this together. Or just get your hands dirty and start making something yourself. There's never been a better time to start exploring virtual reality. So I wanted to say thank you to XLab for being a part of this video. I took them away for a few hours while they were grinding away on the beta, so thanks again. And also, in case people are curious, I don't work for XLab, I'm just an advisor, and I just genuinely like their project, otherwise I wouldn't be an advisor. And I also want to say thank you to my amazing Patreon supporters for making videos like this possible, especially my Omegas like Surefire Sentinel, Least Bad, Anil, Benji, Dutech, Dysfunctional Potat, HCG Randon, Henry B, Codesca, Sancho, Nat, Ronzarelli, Sensuin Fox, The Bandit 21, Very Evil Shadow, and Yamakura. I couldn't do any of this without you. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.